County in Central Florida comes the professional bowlers tour, Greater Sebring Open. Okay, let's meet our outstanding field of professionals. In the opening match, fifth seeded player won his first crown three weeks ago from Maryland, Tim Chris. Tim will battle a pro making his first championship round of his career from Tampa, Darren Hayes. The winner takes on another Floridian looking for his first PBA crown, Bob Belmont. The survivor moves on into the semifinal game against the number one bowler in the world, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. The victor goes up against this week's top-seeded player, making his fourth telecast this year from Bolingbrook, Illinois, Steve Jarrows. Bo Burton is here. Chris, $110,000 available in this tournament. A very demanding lane condition. I believe week eight here on ABC could be the most interesting so far this year in 97. An unknown somewhat, Darren Hayes, the local favorite, going against a new champion who won two, a couple weeks ago, Tim Chris. 30-year-old right-hander is going to shoot first on the left lane. Pretty, pretty strike on tough conditions, right, Nelson? Well, Chris, overall, there was 2,711 games bowled in the PBA tournament, and the total field only averaged 196. You better bring all your bowling skills with you today. Now from the left side, Darren Hayes from nearby Tampa. All even after one frame in our opening match. Darren Hayes, left-hander, five-step delivery, pretty solid arm swing. Watch, it's right in line with his target. He's playing just outside the first arrow, in good position, a good solid follow-through, and gets a perfect result on his first shot, national television. Pin on the left lane. We can watch Darren shoot the spares. A little wide, the left hand lane hanging a little bit for the left hander. Makes a good shot. This is not the type of environment you just want to try to attack the pocket. So keep it in play, make your spares. He's quickly up with another bowling ball to cut down his hook, hopefully, convert to seven. So it's an open frame following a strike. For Darren Hayes, who today will make his first Professional Bowlers Association money because if you even lose the first match, you get $4,000. If you win, of course, you move ahead. The next opponent will be Bob Belmont. Tim <laughs> Chris with a double. On the championship pair, Chris, the right-handed players average 222. It's a pretty solid pair. It's in the middle of the house, 32-lane bowling center. The lefties only average 213. So slight advantage to the right-handers, nine-pin edge. We have three righties today. You can see Tim Chris's grip. You saw the six rounds he bowled, 42 games. Leads in this match by 22. Three in the row for Tim, who had a 15 and 9 match play record. Had to average 2 2 to get into match play. Third pin on the left hand part of your screen. Watch it do the damage. Two pin to the sideboard trips out the 4 and 7 pins. Hayes, let's see how you can cover from that errant second frame. And another seven, but on the right line. And once again, changing balls. In the championship round play, if a player misses a spare, he normally loses the game 65% of the time. Now, his technique is to start over in this area, and he wants to get that ball right down the third arrow pretty straight. He was a little wide the last frame and slid off into the channel. Okay. No sense of humor by the young man from Tampa, Florida, Darren Hayes. We're in Sebring, Florida. Uh, 
Highlands County, an area that has 78 God-made lakes. Three sevens. Keeping the ball in, in play, and there's one little flaw I've seen in Darren's game. He kind of pulls up at the foul line. He's stiff-legged at the line, and that has him throw the ball down into the lane. It bounces slightly, and that caused it just not to finish enough to kick out that seven. He would have loved to have four strikes to start this game. However, he's got a strike, a miss, another spare, and once again, the seven pin, fourth frame. Okay, well done. Yes, we're in Central Florida, where agriculture is important to the economy, and one of the chief products, what else? Oranges. Sebring, Florida. Tim Chris has a 33-pin lead with three strikes in a row, shooting in the fourth of our very first match. Chris uh, off to a good start as his experience is showing. Uh, he got a good break. He tripped the four-pin, but uh, all the shots have been in the pocket. Four in a row for Tim. First full year in the tour was 1993. And of course, he won the flagship ship open this year in Erie, Pennsylvania. The arena setting rose to the occasion. His wife, Sherry, uh, entertained everybody with her karaoke talents last night. Proud of her husband's four strikes in a row and 43 pin lead opening match. Kiss that ten pin, though. Well, I right, Chris. The six pin just mm. just the head of the six pin tapped out the ten. The late Billy Waylu used to call it the love tap. Can't beat it when you get a great break like that. He's uh, showing his experience. It's up to Darren Hayes to try to attack, but it's very difficult. Keep the ball in play. Usually, somebody will make a mistake in the match. Fair up. Darren, after leaving three seven pins, tries to put a little extra on the ball. He pulls up at the line, cuts right through the heart, the two, four, and seven. He feels his best asset in the sport of bowling is his concentration. He says if that leaves him, anything can go wrong. Nicely done. Coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, it's a tour of Olympic gymnastics champions. Featuring Shannon Miller, Dominique Dawes, and host Robin Roberts reports from Churchill Downs in the Kentucky Derby preview presented by Visa. Plus, world short track speed skating from Japan. Coming up next, Wide World, right here, ABC Sports. Lots of variety, good action. Darren Hayes, head pinned to the sideboard, slams across the lane, rips the rack, nothing but pin shrapnel left down there on that shot. That was his best shot of the game. However, Tim Chris has a commanding 56 pin lead, five strikes in a row. Ten thousand bucks if he can throw another six in a row, and if he anybody does in the championship game today, one hundred thousand dollars. There were uh, no three hundreds bowled this week during the tournament, but a lot of clutch strikes thrown. Most of the games come down to the tenth frame. All right, that's seven. There have been 55 300 games rolled in 14 tournaments. Darren, who works as an accountant for his father-in-law, a job very similar to my oldest daughter, Katrina. Hey. Bowls part-time. Nice job. Good double and uh, brings it back a little. Trailing by 66, but look at all the strikes. 
Mm. Seven in a row. Well, in this environment, seven in a row is not a guaranteed lock. If Darren Hayes takes it off the sheet, 234, in almost every game, somebody makes a huge mistake and turns the match around. I'm not trying to jinx Tim Chris, but that's what we've seen so far this week. Darren, the University of North Carolina Charlotte graduate. Has bowled an excellent game, has not had good luck with the left-hand corner of the seven pin. That's his fourth seven pin in eight frames, and that will be his undoing as his lead of Tim Chris becomes insurmountable right now. After this shot, Darren Hayes will become a spectator. Seven is only his second PBA tournament, first ever on television. Uh, he will leave with $4,000. Sherry stood by last night in the 42nd game when Don Best Jr., who was in fifth place, finished with four strikes in a row. Tim Chris threw strikes three times in the 10th frame to qualify by one single pin after 42 games. He's now maximizing his opportunity. Ending. Well, he got the ball a little inside target, a little too much spin, and it doesn't quite flip around. And we've seen the 710 made before, but we won't see it this time. Kegel Bowling Center in Sebring, Florida. You know, Florida Highlands Hammock State Park offers a refuge for wildlife and a serene environment for members of the community. Believe me, it's a standing room only crowd here at Kegel Bowling Center in Sebring, Florida. This is Darren Hayes, who is down too many pins to mention it because his opponent, eight in a row before he opened. But for his first television appearance, Quite well, Chris, as he's kept the ball in play as a potential mm -hmm. 202. Actually, he bowled an extra day. He was one of our rabbits, the Pro Tour qualifiers that bowled on Monday. We had 56 rabbits shooting for 38 spots. Darren qualified seventh, averaging 204, and that will get you a lot of money in a John Davis Bowling Center. Spend the next frame for Darren Hayes. He has six regional titles. He's in the southern region, of course. He uh, won the, as we look at Tim Chris, Darren won the Daytona Beach doubles with Kirk Von Kruger, our current national tournament director. That was in 92. Kurt now runs the show and extremely well. Okay, tonight on ABC, the Lex Files trilogy continues on an all-new Lois and Clark, followed by a brand-new episode of Leaving L.A. Then, an all-new ABC music special starring, get this, U2, a year in pop featuring concert footage from last night's tour performance in Las Vegas. That's all tonight on ABC. Don't miss it. Potential 202 for Darren Hayes. He averaged 214 on this pair during the week. An encouraging finish for the 34-year-old. Walter Ray Williams, Jr., 
staying loose off to our right. Some practice lines looking very good. In the next match, Tim Chris will meet Bob Bellman. You talk about an exciting player, another port sider, southpaw, but he mm -hmm. can really scatter the pins. So it's a 201 and four thousand dollars for Darren Hayes. Well, this ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Bowler Show will continue after these messages and a word from our ABC station as Chris meets Belmont next. The Professional Bowlers Tour on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Kellogg's. With good taste, nutrition, and value, the best you each morning from Kellogg's. The owners, managers, and crew who proudly call the McDonald's in your neighborhood, my McDonald's. And Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. Lake surrounded Sebring, Florida. And our first match is over with Tim Chris. 11 strikes. 266 to Darren Hayes, 201. So the condition for Tim Chris, though, were okay. Well, Chris uh, got zeroed on the TV pair, and it, really it's been interesting. The story all week's been kind of the oil pattern. Let's take a look at the oil pattern that was put down by the PBA this week. Basically, it's uh, 38 feet, and they used a different oil this week. It was a little different than some of the players had trouble with it on Wednesday. I had the chance to bowl here Sunday for two hours, Monday for three hours, Tuesday for three hours, and... Uh, Basically, uh, some of the strike-hungry young players were caught off guard and shot some bad scores, but uh, one lesson to be taken from here, if you bowl in a John Davis environment, John Davis Bowling Center, bring all your bowling skills, and so they'll need them here today. Okay, here comes the handshake between Tim Chris and Bob Belmont, originally a native of White Plains, New York, now bowling out of Dunedin, Florida. Here he is. 215 pounds south pole. That very nonchalantly walks away from that power strike. Well, let's, see, let's see if Tim Chris can get it going. Once again, I said slight edge for the right-handers. They out-average the lefties on the championship pair by nine pins. and. We basically picked the championship pair, a TV pair, at random just for audience and camera availability. So, no favoritism showing. So, uh, off to an even match after a frame. The 12 hours of Sebring, the great tests of the great cars. All the great names of one of here, too. Fungio, Gurney, Boyd. Andretti, Shelby, Phil Hill. Come on, get up. Leaving a 10 pin. He has a uh, wireless mic. Sometimes they'll make comments, and sometimes they won't. Now it's uh, to the right of center for the 10. Carefully, he places himself on the right line, hoping to double. Hmm. Three, seven, nine. Belmont's uh, starting down the left side. A good, solid arm swing, but uh, as I sit here talking to uh, Darren Hayes here in a second, he said that right-hand lane is a little bit tighter. You see Belmont going through pulls up on the shot a little bit, leaves the 379, a difficult split at best. Just an open. We've not seen that split, believe me. Okay, Bo. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Darren, uh, pretty solid performance. You hit the pocket a lot of times, and uh, all week long, normally that would be a, a winning game. Yeah, I thought uh, the 201 game that I bowled would have uh, had a legitimate shot of winning because the scores have really been low this week. And uh, if I'd have said, give me 201 to start with, uh, I may have taken it. 
Well, it might win a lot of the other games, but you had a great performance and good luck in your future tournaments. Back to you, Chris. All right. Nice comeback by Bob Belmont. He's on the left lane that time. He's bowling Tim Chris, who won the first game over Aaron Hayes, 266 to 201. Winner of this game will meet Walter Ray Williams, Jr. So now it's ah. a two and sleep rate. Do something to the ball. Okay, we heard him whispering himself, do something to the ball. That means he just kind of babied it. And once again, you don't get the proper performance and it doesn't behave well going down that 60 feet. And it doesn't finish as you look at his grip. He leaves the 2-8 spare by no means a gimme. Okay, a spare in the third for Tim Chris. As we look at Tim Chris, uh, I had a three years where I basically went off pro bowling and bowled a couple of weeks, Chris, and I, I put him in a category with our tournament leader, Steve Jaros, and Tommy Dilutes as the most improved over the last three years. These players came from average pros to bona fide stars. Jaros has been in the winner's circle, Chris, and Dilutes will be there shortly. Crossover, but leaving uh, the ten. Okay, inside your target line, accuracy is the primary thing. And doesn't pay the maximum penalty, but once again, doesn't have a chance for a strike. Well, as we go to break, let's take a look at this week's historical flashback. First, we travel back to January of 1989 when power problems struck in the middle of our third match. We were all reminded of that age-old parental decree, lights out. In March of 1991, Del Ballard Jr. needed only seven pins to win the Fairlanes Open. Through this gutter ball to learn firsthand the meaning of the term, the agony of defeat. And finally, there was Pete Weber at the 1991 Open who had no problems receiving the check, but the trophy, well, that's a different story. My Our roving ABC camera gives you the view that Bo and I see from our broadcast location. And we look down and it's Bob Belmont ready to uh, bowl in the right lane. He's trailing by nine. He can take a one pin lead for the strike. A two. Belmont a little bit high on the right hand lane. He sends it wide and hooks high. Gets a great break. Could have had the two seven baby split. A simple spare by Belmont and he will trail in the match by ten. Thank you, Chris. With me, the number one player in the world, Walter Ray Williams, Jr., but uh, you haven't been up to that uh, moniker the last uh, couple of weeks. What's been the problem? Then you've turned it around really here, though. Um, I'm not really sure, but uh, I got a horseshoe tournament I was supposed to go to tomorrow in uh, St. Louis with some good players, and so I practiced a little bit this week, and I guess I got my bowling in shape. So the arm swing's similar, huh? Uh, very similar. I need to be accurate this week, and uh, normally you got to be accurate in horseshoes. <laughs> well, it's not the first time it's happened to you. Let's see if you can come away with a win today. Back to you, Chris. Six-time world champion. Not getting any breaks, Bob Belmont, who bowls usually extremely well on tough conditions. But he has a seven pin on the left lane. Was 18 and six in match play. He's ranked 72nd by the PBA, while well, his opponent is ranked eighth. a close match in our second. The first was not as Tim Chris hold a 266, 11 strikes to Darren Hayes, 201. Here's Chris. That's better. That's 
So that's what I liked about this lane condition. He knew he threw the ball well, and that's all he worked on, and let the pins results be natural. He got it rewarded with an unassisted strike, all 10 pins in the pit. Leads by 10 pins, six frame, can make it 20. top seed started today from fifth Belmont used to be a power player but he had three wrist operations over the past 10 years he's cut his hook down and now he keeps the ball much more in play and is much better actually he's more versatile all right Kango bowling center Sebring Florida and there you see 20 pins separating these two professionals. Belmont, very interesting. He uses a fingertip grip, the full grip for his strike ball. And he used to use a conventional grip where he put his fingers in down to the second knuckle to kill the shot for his spare ball. Now, he doesn't do it as much anymore as you see him going with the full fingertip grip. Just the tips of the fingers put in the ball. That maximizes his power. And he changes the grip for his spares. <laughs> Right, powerful double, cuts the lead. Lake Placid, Florida, a sister city of Sebring, has been acclaimed for the artistic presentation simply known as the murals of Lake Placid. Close match. Tim Chris won the first 266 to 201 as we returned to Sebring, Florida, where we had a real downpour earlier. Here's a double up, shooting in the seventh frame. First solid tap he's had today. Pretty good shot, sends it just a pinch wide, ring and 10, but has to be satisfied with that. Keep the ball in play, win the matches. Convincingly toppled. Convincing first game. Mr. Chris with 11 strengths, 266. Ray continues to uh, stay loose off to the right. Eight frame. Now Bob Bell. Take the lead. Fundamental flaw in his delivery there. He got his body turned sideways, facing basically towards the lower end of the house, pulled it across his body. There is no reward for bad shots in this bowling center. We've seen John Mazza make the 710. However, Bob Belmont will not make it today. He now drops in arrears through eight frames by 23 pins. Hang in there, set up a strike in the ninth frame. Most of these matches are lost, not really won. In a tough match game environment like this.
Now you can see Belmont. He's squared up to the line. What I mean is shoulders are facing down the line. Pretty good shot, a little stiff leg. It gets a six pin. That's not too bad. The previous frame, he had turned sideways and pulled the ball high. Quickly off this chair and looking for his spot, setting himself. Tim, Chris, strike up ninth frame. Needs two marks to lock up the match. There's no way to play safe. Go to the hole. You know, you know next Saturday at 430 Eastern on ABC's Wide World of Sports, you'll see the first jewel in the Visa Triple Crown Challenge. 123rd running the Kentucky Derby live from Churchill Downs. Chris, I'm going to give you some bets. I'm going to give are? you the trifecta now. You take Crypto Star with Pat Day, who's won more Triple Crown mm -hmm. events than anybody. Put him with Captain Bodgett. Mm -hmm. and I'll tell you the one that's going to make you the money is Freehouse. Bet those three, you'll be in good business. Good shape. Okay, next Saturday, 4.30 Eastern on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Then, if you just want to bet a single horse, go for my friend George Steinbrenner's Concerto. If you want to bet on this bowling match, put all your money on Tim Chris. He just locked up the match with that strike as a potential 236. It's going to be Chris against the number one player in the world in match three, Walter Ray Williams Jr. Sherry, Chris. 225 with a conversion, off to a terrific start. Pulled 266 in his first game. He is zeroed on this championship pair. He's going to be tough to beat. 225 for Tim Chris to go along with his 266 in his first victory. Well, the first two matches have gone pro forma. The left-handers uh, over the period of the week struggled on the championship pair. The right-handers have had a slight edge. Tim Chris takes out both southpaws. First telecast this year for Bob Belmont, and only his fifth in his career. Did own a pro shop and decided to give it up so he could spend a little more time hitting the boards out here, Bob. <laughs> Well, he bowls part-time, Chris. He's a sharp player, and uh, his championship round record now goes to 0-5, and, and I'm sure he'll improve on that sooner or later. Uh, 192. This week, Bo Burton shares an adjustment that can definitely improve your spare-making technique. Watch and listen. difference between the average bowler and the really good player isn't just strikes, it's converting spares. The key spares are the right-hand corner spares such as the 6 and 10 pins. And even a lot of good players have trouble adapting to the proper technique of breaking your wrist back and throwing it hard and straight across the lane. They seem to want to revert back to their old hook ball, and this is marginal at best. Today I'll show you a practice vehicle that I find is very good improving your right hand corner spare techniques. Number one, pick a spot on the right hand part of the lane outside the first arrow. Throw it down about the second board. This will help you overcome your fear of rolling the ball in the channel and teach you to kill the shot. I guarantee you once you develop this technique from the right side in your practice and move back over to the left, shoot across lane, you'll improve your spare making potential. ACW. Here in Sebring, Florida, Tim Chris, seated to fifth now, has won two big games. He's faced now with Walter Ray Williams, Jr. A tough match coming up, Chris, and uh, as we said, Tim Chris is one of the most improved players on the tour. And you'll see another one right there if Walter Ray will move away. That's Paige Pankin, Walter Ray's wife. Tommy DeLutes right there, one of the most improved players I've seen out on the tour. And there was this long, solid tournament here as we look 6 through 24. 
Some of the other cashers, former U.S. Open champion Robert Lawrence in the money this week. Johnny Petraglia, a 199 average. Check that. Got him 1000 bucks. Ernie Schlegel made 1150 and here's some of the other top players. Norm Duke. Del Ballard made a run at it. Tommy Baker, solid as usual, in the finals almost every week. The fireball, Phil Ringener back in there. Randy Peterson said, I really improved my game this week. He felt the demanding lane conditions are going to improve him down the line. Sullen's having a good year. Eugene McCune never uses all of his talent, or he's never finished 19th. He should be ninth. Bob Benoit right up there, and The Rock brings down the field. Okay, Bo, and uh, we're going to have a week off, but in two weeks, we'll be back in New North Brunswick, New Jersey. Johnny Petraglia opened our normal starting time at 3 Eastern. Then three weeks from today, we'll be in the lovely city of Toronto for the IOF Foresters Open. Note the time difference. We begin at 1 o'clock Eastern. That's 1 o'clock Eastern, three weeks from today, from Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Now, match three, Walter Ray Williams Jr. and Tim Chris. We're going to have some contrasting styles here as you see Chris, who is hooking the lane, moderate hook ball. Walter Ray Williams Jr. struggled with his big hook earlier in the week, but has opted for the straight ball last night and made a huge charge into second place. Two of the hot players on tour and best in the world in the semifinal here. He's had this 17, now make it 18 strikes as he shot first here in his third game today. Tim Chris, now Walter Ray Williams Jr. Hundred and eighty pounds, thirty-seven years old. I tell you, crossing lanes. Now remember, there's thirty-two lanes in this house. Walter Ray, I believe, came up with the best technique late last night. He averaged two sixty at one run, with a down and in, with some powerful lift. Just because you throw it straight doesn't mean you fudge it or kill it. He's letting that wrist rotate straight through the ball. Good lesson. Three-time player of the year has left the two pin on the left lane. Then hit, leaving the two. Okay. Strike and a spare for Walter Ray. Now trim Chris. Strike up shooting in the second frame. This is a semifinal game. Winner will meet Steve Jaros, Bolingbrook, Illinois. Another 10 pin. This is the fifth TV appearance for Tim. He has been consistent. Tim Chris on the left side of the lane just doesn't get a handful. Not quite enough lift. Leaves the soft 10. You see the six lie down in the channel. He's won 50,000 this year. And here's Bo. Thank you, Chris. Bob, you had to be pretty happy with the game you bowled. You know, all week long, that type of game would win a lot of matches. Yeah, that's correct. They were tough all week. Uh, you need a couple breaks here and there to bowl a decent game. Unfortunately, I threw one bad shot. I left the 3-7. You know, 7-10 I thought was a good shot, but obviously it wasn't. But those are the breaks. You had to get a couple breaks to bowl decent games this week. And if you didn't, anything could happen. All right, good performance and good luck in the next tournament. Back to you, Chris. Okay, now the corner pins. Uh, giving Tim Chris some problems here. Left a 10 and now a 7. 10 on the left lane. Just joined us. He won the first game. 266 to 201. Darren Hayes. Then 225 to Bob Belmont's 192. And then blows the 7 pin. Chris, there's some stats that go with that in match play competition. First place, a pro only misses a single pin once every 10 games. So this is a rare exception for Chris. And number two, when you miss a spare, 
in match baiting competition, you usually lose the game two out of three times. Come on. All right, good shot. Come on, let's hurt it. Walter just muscles the ball down there with a good solid lift, a ring and 10. Going a little more direct like he is, he may not carry as well as Chris, but he has a better chance of keeping the ball in play. Clean, Walter Ray Williams Jr. 93rd television appearance, but the 65th in the 90s alone. Paige Pennington, his wife. Central Florida, which is home of the 12 hours of Sebring. There are many types of athletes sport that eat your feet alive. Don't just cure some, kill them all. Lotrimin AF. Poor prescription strength medicine, the brand doctors recommend most. Lotrimin AF, the killer cure. I helped my dad build this place. Well, help. I was so small I could barely swing the hammer. But he taught me a lot about tools. He used to say, you can buy cheap tools every couple of years. Or you can buy Stanley once. Since 1843, a company from New Britain, Connecticut has been helping people do things right. Stanley. I even take my tape roll fishing. Well, that way I'll know how big a story to tell. Here's the easy way to a beautiful lawn, miracle Grow Lawn Food. It stimulates root growth, helps fill in thin spots to give you a thick, beautiful carpet of green. miracle Grow Lawn Food does all the work. You get all the credit. They risked it all for a moment on top of the world. Tragedy and triumph on Everest. Now, one year later, how it's changed their lives. Turning Point, ABC Sunday. You've seen them make others talk, but how do they make a gangster rap? Yeah, I'll cut your throat. An all-new bloom. You're gonna wish you never were born. ABC Tuesday. Ah, uh, yes. Highlands County Royalty. So refreshing, so young and pretty. Tim Chris, fourth frame, trails by 11. And again, the seven pin. Sebring, Florida. On the 12 hours, Sebring. Racing on ABC tomorrow. Bosch Spark Park Grand Prix, and May 25th, don't forget, 81st running of the Indy 500, May 25th. And don't forget the first Saturday in May, one of my favorites, Kentucky Derby. I think they're all my favorites, what, what am I saying? Having done them all, I love them. Chris. The 3-6-10, Chris just gets inside his target. If you've been watching the telecast the last 45 minutes, he was going out to about the fifth board. He tugs it in the seventh board. He almost leaves the 3-6-7-10. And I'll say what, the 3-6-10 has been no gimme this week. It's kind of tough crossing the line. Mm. So Walter Ray is up after Chris marks for that spare in the first. Walter Ray with a 14-10 lead, but has a strike up in the fourth. That's not what I want to do. Come on. Come on. Can't do that. Come on. 
He convinced me. Walter Ray with just too much speed throws it through the break. He's only playing a minimum break of about six boards, but if he throws it too hard, he slides by. Once again, another tough spare. Not an easy spare, the 2-8. That's it. Okay. Well. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Steve Jarrell, are you kind of surprised by the uh, scoring of Tim Chris in the first two matches, or have things settled down out there? Uh, really, I'm not. You know, right now we don't have the uh, the problem of having to cross pairs across the house, so you know we've had a little bit of time to practice on them, and really all week um, it's, it's played out that when we made really good shots, the scores were available. It's a tough condition, but it's definitely not unplayable. Chris, he's our tournament leader as Walter Ray gets a break. Back to you. Tripped everything but the four pin on the left oh, plane. Let's All look right, at that on. again. Take a while to play it. <laughs> All right, nice spare. Tomorrow night on ABC, a completely new hour of America's Funniest Home Videos, followed by a brand new special edition of Turning Point from ABC News. Then, it's finally here. The television event Entertainment Weekly calls the most frightening movie ever made for television, a brand new version of Stephen King's The Shining. The Shining, starring Rebecca de Mornay and Steve Weber. Don't miss it. That's tomorrow night on ABC. As the championship pair starts toughening up a little bit with the oil carry down as the players push the oil towards the strike zone, Tim Chris has made a few adjustments, and Walter Ray could have put him away early. He's given Chris new life, and right now with the strike in the seventh, the difference would only be three pins. Sherry Chris liking these moments here in Sebring. Ever hear the phrase, what you see is what you get? Well, look closer, and you might get this Florida surprise. Yikes. It's third and long. Clearly, they're thinking pass. I'm telling you, Troy Aikman's third down completion percentage is out of sight. They line up in a passing formation, and Aikman is back to pass. He's looking, looking. He's got a receiver wide open. He's still looking. Whoa, what's going on? And, ooh, Aikman's down. Oh, he had all the time in the world. You've got to ask yourself, what was this guy thinking? Brute is all part of the game. All right, guys. Same play. A leg of my ego, or you want to talk it over? Sure, let's chat. My wife and I have been Ego waffles, too good to let go. For a telecast of bowling, this is our first visit to the Sebring area. Very impressed with it. Chris, look at the oil streaks where Tim Chris is throwing the ball. Now Walter Ray is going to try to come straight inside there. Come on, baby, come on. All right, decent shot. Walter Ray just keeping keeping the ball in play, just doesn't quite get the finish. Another 10-pin. This is the way the whole week has panned out. Walter Ray leads in the match by two with a spare. This is the pivotal match, the semifinal, right to meet the tournament leader, Steve Jaros. Yeah, I guess you got to move. Walter quickly up with his strike ball. Leads by two pins over a newly crowned champion in the flagship open. Tim Chris, eighth break. Come on. Do I leave anything else besides ten pins? Jeez. But Walter, that's your easiest spare, bud. 
because he has good technique and good angles. On, look barely. at the angle, a cross lane. Look at the technique, a broken wrist shot. For the first time in the match, Tim Chris, with one more strike, can take the lead. Eighth frame, he has two strikes working. April 5th, they won in Erie. His first national PBA event. And this is one he'd really like to win. Chris, I can remember when you win one, that can happen. That can be an aberration. But when you win two, and especially get by maybe a player like Walter Ray Williams Jr. or Steve Jaros, you really have put your imprimatur on professional bowling. I am a player. Come on, come back. Oh. Another 10-pin on the left lane. Oh, this is fun. This is good bowling action. Basically, as a pro, by the definition of being a pro bowler, it's the only goal of competition at pro level is victory. Score is secondary. Okay, tomorrow, 2 Eastern, 1 Central, the Pacific, defending champion and hometown favorite, Michael Andretti, races against the likes of defending pole sitter Paul Tracy and PPG points leader Scott Pruitt, 44 points. In the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix tomorrow, three Eastern, one Central and Pacific. A big AA in the foundation frame. Come on. Kind of a throwback strike right there, Chris. The old wall shot that Dick Weber used to get. As you see, the eyes, the concentration, and obviously the positive reaction of Walter Ray, who needs two strikes and nine to lock up this game. to the pocket too much man well Walter with two more strikes and nine could have locked out Tim Chris and right now he is trailing by eight pins with a spare and a strike he would finish 196 Chris would just need an, any kind of good count and a spare to go on to meet Jeros for the title but we've seen a lot of open frames in the final matches so far this year Okay. Winner will go into that championship game. Steve Jaros. One ninety six for Walter Ray. Well, when you need a mark. You go right for the pocket. There is no, I'm going to move a couple of boards left or I'm going to throw it harder. He knows how to throw a perfect shot on that lane. They are rewarded in this bowling center. He needs one good shot to lock up the match. Tim Chris. Tim Chris will be in the final game here at Sebring. This ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Bowler Tour will continue after these messages and a word from our ABC station. This is the Big Mac. This is my dad, Jim Delagatti. This is my dad, Jim Delagatti. He created the world's greatest burger, 12 beef patties. There's cheese in there. Special sauce. Very special. Very secret. This is a my size meal. Right now, buy a drink and fries. Any drink, any fries, any size. And get a Big Mac for just 55 cents. 55 cents. To salute 1955, the year it all began. This is a very good idea. This won't be around forever. This sesame seed is bigger than my head. This is my McDonald's. I like being in control. With this new Dinnerex, I control the cause of my dandruff every day. New Dinnerex Advanced Formula. Its medicine doesn't just treat the symptoms, it controls a leading cause of dandruff called Peel Valley. Now that's serious control. New Dinnerex Advanced Formula.
Here's the easy way to a beautiful lawn, miracle Grow Lawn Food. It stimulates root growth, helps fill in thin spots to give you a thick, beautiful carpet of green. miracle Grow Lawn Food does all the work. You get all the credit. ABC Tuesday is pop with home improvement at 8, 7 central, just because we know you like it. And America's got soul. 30 million have watched. Critics call it a hit. What was that? The word of God. And hold everything. Huh? It's a brand new home improvement where Jill botches up cool time. I, I just wanted to signal you. And that signal would be this. Then, on all new Spin City, it's the most embarrassing thing that can happen to a man. Can't you guys control those things? Sometimes all it takes is a slight breeze. <laughs> it's Bob, ABC Tuesday. ABC Tonight. Attention, Pop Mark Chopper. An all new special. Pop Phenomenon U2 see the making of their hit album. Watch as they prepare for their massive Pop Mark tour. It's an animal. And be there for U2's opening night taped live in Las Vegas. U2, a year in pop, an all new special, 10 9 Central. Followed by New Center 5 at 11. It's easy to look okay if you spend a lot. At the Optical Factory, I look good, and the prices look great. Put on two pair of great-looking glasses at the Optical Factory from just $59.95. Exam included. The only thing better looking than the prices at the Optical Factory will be you. The Optical Factory has great prices on contacts, too. Two pair, $99.95. Exam included. Great prices do look good at the Optical Factory. Juliana Margulies and Stephen Weber, all new. Next, Rosie. Hello, everyone. I'm Robin Roberts in Louisville, Kentucky. Coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, we'll preview our coverage of next week's Kentucky Derby presented by Visa. Plus, encore performances by gold medalist Shannon Miller, Dominique Mociano, and other winners from Atlanta in the Tour of Olympic Gymnastics Champions. Plus, world short track speed skating from Japan. And in our Wide World Classic, Nadia Komenich makes history in her first major competition, the 1975 European Championship. It's all next on Wide World. Yes, there have been three victories by Tim Chris today, 266 to 201. Then uh, he moves on and wins 225 to 192. And then goes against the best in the world, Walter Ray Williams Jr., and wins it to get into the final game against Steve Jarrows. 201 to 196 was the score. We're in Sebring and we're off next week, but two weeks from today, we're in North Brunswick, New Jersey for the Johnny Petragli Open. And that'll begin the Showboat Hotel Casino uh, presentation of the return of the King of the Hill because the winner of Johnny's tournament. Well, then, three weeks from today, meet the winner of the IOF Forester Tournament in Toronto, where they go head-to-head. -head. And remember, Ron Williams went for week after week, so we look forward to it. Well, Chris, it's sudden death, and uh, there's winner-take-all in the King of the Hill matches. Remember, Ron Williams won almost $200,000, and I'm looking forward to that starting back. That'll be May 31st, our first King of the Hill match. Right now, for... 18,000 in the trophy and 9,500 to the runner-up. The Greater Sebring Open. Oh, Dan Gurney is watching because he always talked about how the orange blossoms smelled here in Sebring when he raced. They still do, Dan. Okay. Very impressive fashion, the way this man starts. If you like numbers, Steve Jaros is 0-7 in his last seven championship round appearances. However, he will finish first in the match, and the tournament leader is 10-3 when he finishes first. 10 pound now. Good opening shot. I don't think I've seen Steve Jaros any more dominating than he was last night. He just took this field and these lanes and just overpowered them. However, today is a one-game sprint. Let's see how he does. Steve is ranked number nine. 
Tim Chris is ranked number eight and the money earned thus far this year. Uh, Steve has won fifty one thousand forty four and the closeness Tim Chris fifty thousand fifty dollars. So as I mentioned the winner will get eighteen grand to add to his total and the runner up ninety five hundred. Steve Jaros a little bit left the target on in the second frame. You see he wants to get it out about the fifth board, hits about the seventh, breaks up the four six split. Okay. Here today we're glad as our senior vice president of production, Steve Anderson and his son Matt, and Steve's father in law, Ben Honorato, who hasn't missed a frame. What a bowling fan his father in law is. Well, the number one player in the world uh, practices horseshoes this week and got back in contention, but maybe you had to pitch a few more shoes. Uh, Chris was tough on you. Yeah, Tim bowled very well. He had a, looks like he's got a really nice reaction out there. Um, I had a little trouble early. I threw a couple of bad shots and just couldn't get those pins to fall down. And it was really fortunate to be as close as I was with Tim. He bowled a really good game, and uh, he's going to be tough on Steve, I think. How about in a low-scoring environment compared to a high-scoring environment? Does a guy on a roll have a big edge? Um, I don't know. It's just it's uh, whoever's bowling well. Uh, it's a little bit different game. You got to really um, get those bad games and don't worry about them, and uh, try and get a few of those good games. Uh, fortunately for me, yesterday I had a bunch of good games, but that ball just didn't want to strike today. I don't know why. He'll be back, Chris. This is the championship match. It's close. Two strikes and a spare for Tim Chris. Two spares for the tournament leader, Steve Jaros. Talk about dedication. Steve Jaros lapped this field for 42 games, and when he finished last night, he drilled up two new bowling balls. I spent a half hour talking with him back in the paddock, then he went out and practiced it, practiced and did some test work for an equipment company. Here early this morning, practicing again, he's put himself in position to win his first championship in four years. He needs to play the ball right in this area. That's his best shot. Well, to the victor of today's Greater Seabring Open goes this championship trophy. Forms Mobile One. New Mobile One Zero W30. Superior protection when you start your car. Hate the taste of Arm & Hammer toothpaste? Then try new Smooth Spearmint. Now the baking soda toothpaste that dentists recommend most has a refreshing Spearmint ribbon of flavor. New Smooth Spearmint from Arm & Hammer. Work boots. Tough on the outside, tough on your feet inside. Not enough cushioning. Dr. Scholl's Maximum Comfort Work Insoles give you 100% more cushioning. They make work easier on your feet. The Professional Bowlers Tour on ABC Sports. Brought to you by miracle Grow Extra Long Lasting Lawn Food. The easy way to a beautiful lawn. Stanley. Since 1843, Stanley's been helping people do things right. And Kellogg's with good taste, nutrition, and value. The best to you each morning from Kellogg's. Oh, those orange trees. 
lot of cattle ranching here in the Sebring area, too. Lots of it. Need more than one acre of uh, grass down here, though, mm -hmm. partner. About five acres per cow. Not like where we live. Crossover leaving the town. Well, when a player throws a poor shot, he's very obvious. He gets left the target. Once again, accuracy has to be just perfect and gets soft. He throws it slow to start with, about 16. He was down about 15 and a half. Crosses all the way over. If he converts a 10 pin, he'll trail in the championship match by one. Okay. The Pro Bowlers Tour on ABC will return in two weeks to the Johnny Petraglia Open in North Brunswick, New Jersey. The start time is 3 Eastern. That's two weeks from today. Johnny cashed in this tourney mm -hmm. tournament. 40th spot, 199 average, took home better than 1000 bucks. Steve Jaros with a double up, shooting in the fifth frame. This guy's so particular about his grip. He uses a fingertip grip, but he works out those thumb holes and fiddles with them, takes them home. He's in the pro shop business, but he absolutely has everything perfect before he uses a bowling ball. Tournament leaders, a kind of a surprise, Norm Ginsburg, uh, who kind of woke up about halfway through the second block and ended up averaging about 180. And Del Ballard came in into play, and then Steve Jaros was solid all the way through. But right, once on. again, we haven't seen Del Ballard in the championship round this year. He is bowling much better. We'll see him before the season's out. Now Jaros can take a 21 pin lead, six frame. a four-bagger for the tournament leader. Strike up, however, for Tim Chris now. Tim has won three games if you just join us. 266 at 225. Chris, doesn't this style remind you of one of your friends, uh, Tom Hennessy from St. Mm -hmm. Louis? Very same type of very style. Same. Medium speed, very methodical. Brings back many memories when you speak of Tom Hennessy. Man of lots of fun. Tim Chris strikes in the sixth, strike here in the seventh. The lead of Steve Jaros would just be one pin. Patient Tim Chris leaves a half ten, almost has the swish in seven ten. Watch the five pin slide right over in front of the seven, doesn't get the action, and then off the sideboard. Six avoids the ten. Okay. So I want to give you the definition of a good son. One of our highly skilled technicians, George Botcher. Um, gave his mother a brand new TV set, Lillian Botcher, who has watched this telecast from the beginning 36 years ago. Now, isn't that a good son to do that? Terrific. Jaros with the first chance to take a commanding lead. Watch his arm swing. See the elbow bend early, getting the ball left the target, cuts right through the middle. Three, six, nine, ten spare. The best way to pick it up is get it over here in the three, six zone. Let the ball take out the nine, and the six will take out the ten. Shoot a hook ball down the right side. As Jaros puts a little powder on his thumb, the humidity's a little higher. He needs to get out of the ball clean to make this shot. Three, six, nine, ten. Beautiful job. Well, that's pretty much a double right there. Come on. Interesting statement. He says that's pretty much as good as a double. There 
they are. June, June Dobalakis, and Helen Geralds. Hoping that Steve can maintain his eight pin lead for three more frames. Championship match. Oh, boy. Mm. A little too fast. June D. Well, you heard Steve say a little too fast. Speed being critical. Throws the ball about 18 miles an hour. He only uses a 15 pound ball. Doesn't flip back. And he needs to get the ball over there in that 2 4 zone. Take out the 10. He's going for it. Tim Chris sitting on the bench takes the lead of seven pins, eighth frame. No way to protect it, just make good shots. Don't look at the finish line one shot at a time. That's the way you attack a championship match. Right now, Tim Chris going at a 217 pace, Steve Jaros has a potential 230. The match is far from over, but Jeros is not as sharp as we saw him yesterday. Chris can go for the throat. Here we go. Fourth match of the afternoon for Tim. <laughs> Leading by 17 at this point. All week long, I saw Steve Giros get out of the ball the same speed, the same release. Today, he's losing the ball a little bit off his hand, throwing one a little bit harder. Let's see if he, can, if he can just get everything back together and throw three good shots here and get right back in the match. Ninth frame. Well, the man that has very few unproductive movements in his game needs his best shots right now. He trails by 17. Two strikes here in the 10th would give him the lead and force Tim Chris to strike for the title. Let's see what happens. One more to take the lead and make Chris strike on the final frame. showed his medal on that shot the first time I've ever seen him have to throw one for all the wheat and his beautiful arm swing which is very low maintenance directly online came through for him there now he needs seven pins to make Tim Chris strike Mistake, partner. You know what ends up with 225? Chris only needs nine spare. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. After throwing such quality shots in the ninth and the first two in the tenth, he tries to throw it down the middle instead of attack the pocket. The door is wide open for Tim Chris. The situation is simply this. Needs a strike or nine spare strike. Either one is victory, his second of the year.
As you see Steve Jaros give him a handshake, I think that everybody, the quartet that he defeated, will agree that he bowled the best today. There's your winner. Tim Chris, great champion. Who's going to jump first? Coming up next, it's the Pro Bowling Tour here on ABC Sports, and we remind you once again, we will keep track of what's going on. Something happens, we'll get back to you. I'm Paul Page for Tom Sneva, Jack Root, and Gary Gerald. Stay with us on ABC Sports. The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. of New Jersey as the greatest bowlers in the world return to Carroll Air Lanes in North Brunswick for the championship round of the Johnny Petraglia Open. Now, let's meet our standing field of finalists. Fifth seed looking for back-to-back -back wins from Bel Air, Maryland, Jim Chris. His opening opponent owns 22 titles, defending champion from Stockton, California, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Third seed is a former PBA Rookie of the Year. Four career wins from Carpenter Springs, Florida, Steve Hoskins. 